Lots going on. 16 spots earned yesterday in open final qualifying. And in case you missed it, how about this one? At Dundonald Links in Scotland, Angel Hidalgo arrived at his final hole, the par 4 ninth. One shot out of a likely playoff for a spot in the field at Troon. The 26-year-old Spaniard, who is ranked 389th in the world, didn't just gain one shot. How about two of them? Holding out from 120 yards for Eagle to shoot 369 and get in the clubhouse at five under, securing his first ever major championship start. Dundonald Lynx was a place for another good story yesterday. Jack McDonald, who's a member at Barassi, less than three miles from Troon, he gained a spot in the Open in a three-man playoff. His grandfather actually played the famous duel in the Sun Open down the coast of Turnberry in 1977 and is an honorary member a true. McDonald played there as a kid and now he will play there as a competitor in the 152nd Open Championship. And to me, Jimmy, stories like yesterday and these two stories of Hidalgo and McDonald, to me it's, it almost makes an argument for Monday qualifiers for signature events. Just wow. if, if you're going to have an event that celebrates the best in the world, let's create at least a pathway, even if it's a narrow pathway, for these kind of stories, narratives of the, the Davids going up against the Goliaths, we're oversubscribed with Goliaths in those <laughs> events and undersubscribed with Davids. And this is very much the nature of both the Open Championship and the US Open, where we saw last month at Pinehurst so many great storylines play their way into the event on golf's longest day. I think the more we can encourage that at the elite level of golf, the better, because the pathways are narrowing. They're narrowing even for people who hold... PGA Tour cards. In terms of the opportunities they're given, there are more and more limited field events. The, the pathway gets tougher for these guys to actually make it. Why not add a little bit of drama to these things as well? And you're going to get a loaded Monday qualifier at a signature event. You think? Because you're going to have guys who are high in the world rankings. I mean, Thomas Dietrich is not in the Open Championship. He's 50th in the official World Golf Rankings, you're going to have a lot of loaded guys try to play their way into these events. Why do I sense there's going to be a column coming out of this? Or maybe, maybe there already has been, and I just haven't been reading carefully. I'm writing it as I speak. Yeah, all right. <laughs> you know, my thought is that we like stories of people who aren't supposed to win, and they eventually do. And we remember those stories. And you don't need to look back any further than 20 years ago at the place we'll be going in a couple of weeks. Troon, Todd Hamilton was ranked outside the top 50 in the world. He was a 500 to one shot to win the Open Championship. What does he do? He gets past Phil Mickelson down the stretch and then he beats Ernie Els, a World Golf Hall of Famer, to claim the championship with a memorable, what was it, a hybrid from just off the green. So we, we like those stories and, you know, if Not we sure don't Ernie see- Ernie likes the story well, as much <laughs> as we do, but- He got his though, <laughs> he eventually got his. But we like those stories, you know, as you say, the things that we don't see coming and, um, why not? Why not, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the more variety we can add to, to these events, the better. You know, Tommy Roy's got this great policy of if you're good enough to play in the Open, you're good enough to be shown on the broadcast. There are so many good stories that go along with that, that policy of showing the, the full rainbow spectrum of this game. And it's not just the simple, the top 50 players in the world right now. There's a lot of great storylines out there. The more of them we can get, the better, particularly these days. I'm giggling. Tommy Roy getting a mention, a shout out on <laughs> golf today. <laughs> He'll appreciate that. All right, let's take a look back at the men's major season to this point in April. Scotty Scheffler won the Masters and with the win became the fourth youngest player ever to win two green jackets behind Jack Nicklaus, Tiger Woods, and Seve Ballesteros. Not bad company. Then in May, it was the PGA at Valhalla where Xander Shoffley broke through for his first major. Shoffley closed with a clutch birdie on the 72nd hole to win by a single shot over Bryson DeChambeau. And Bryson then went on and won his second US Open at Pinehurst just a few weeks ago. Took the title by one over Rory McIlroy thanks to an all-time up and down from the bunker. On the final hole to secure the win. That's why he is probably the most engaging man in the sport right now. And we're just two weeks away from the final major of the men's golf calendar this year as the Open heads to Royal Troon. Live coverage begins Thursday, July 18th on the networks of NBC USA and streaming on Peacock. So, Jimmy, the biggest storyline heading into the Open, and it, I, I do think it's just something of an embarrassment of riches, 
that we have right now. And a lot of them would seem obvious, you know, that will Rory bounce back after what happened at Pinehurst? Will Scotty keep this all-time season going? To me, there, there are kind of two, and oddly both involve live players. Lynx golf is still the unsolved puzzle for Bryson DeChambeau, who has taken such a, a rigorous approach to every other aspect of the game. And he did finish top 10 at St Andrews two years ago, but that's a golf course unusual on the open road in that it lends itself to this kind of bludgeoning of the golf ball. But otherwise, he's never actually had a top 30 finish in the open. And in the last, that's, he's tied for 33rd once, and that's the only time he's ever even broken the top 50 in the open. And I do think it's a puzzle that it's going to be interesting to watch him tackle a troon. But to me, the biggest story is John Ram. And I know he withdrew from Pinehurst with a foot injury early that week, but he's been a competitive irrelevance in the major championships so far this year. A guy who won the Masters last year and contended in two other major championships and was such a storyline every time we went to a major championship. And the game just hasn't been there. Perhaps it's a coincidence that it's happened after he went to live golf. You know, everyone has slump years and maybe this is just his. But to me, the story, a guy who finished tight second in the Open last year, going back there this year, having performed pretty miserably by his standards in major championships this year, to me, that's almost the storyline that I'm, I'm most curious about is what is John Ram going to do at Troon? You know, I too think that the biggest story going into the Open involves Liv, and it isn't necessarily about Ram, and it isn't necessarily about DeChambeau or anybody else in particular. I think that golf... Professional golf, men's professional golf right now is taking such an enormous public beating because they haven't come together and figured out a way to get all the best players in the world playing together. If a live player wins the Open Championship, it will be the second consecutive major mm -hmm. won by a live player. And I just think that the momentum will be so enormous for them to get a deal done. And if they don't have a deal done by then, I just think, you know, the game suffers enormously. So it doesn't really matter who it is. I just think if a live player wins, I just think things are only going to get worse. I, th I actually would, I would differ on that. I think we've reached the point where what happens inside the ropes is less impactful than, than what's happening outside the ropes. I mean, we've seen live guys win majors with mm -hmm. Kepka, with DeChambeau. We've seen guys win majors and then go to live with Ram uh, and Cam Smith. It didn't seem to have any kind of seismic impact. I do think John Ram thought his leaving would be a seismic impact. He's on record as saying that, and it wasn't. I do think they're, they're trundling along with this sort of deal talk, but I, what it's going to do is emphasize a dangerous reality for the PGA Tour, which is that they are in danger of becoming tennis, that there becomes four events a year where they're considered where everyone shows up. And I think that's a, a perception. I don't think it's quite the reality yet, but it's a perception that's taking root and that they need to be wary of. Well, it's not an issue for this week because all the best players in the world will be in one place, or at least I should say in two weeks. All the best players in the world will be in one place and playing so fans can enjoy that. When this narrative becomes significant is during the regular PGA Tour season when people are tuning in, people who love golf on a week-to-week -week basis, and they are not seeing the man who just won the U.S. Open. They are not seeing the man if a live player was to win at Troon, who won the Open Championship. Brooks Kepka, who won the PGA last year. I think that's when it becomes a problem. And I don't know about you, but for me, when I'm out there and I'm talking to people, it's still the first thing that people want to talk about. Is there going to be a deal soon? Mm -hmm. I'm so tired of this. I want to see the best players in the world play against each other every week. That's true. I do think that's a, a sentiment that's growing. Um, the flip side of that is if fans were as determined as we're told to see a John Ram or a Bryson or a Brooks, they'd be watching Liv, but they're not doing that. Well, it's, that's it's a separate a discussion because Liv's product, product isn't very good. Exactly. And so it's not as though the audience, the audience wants them in one place, but the audience has determined that the place that they want them is in the PGA Tour because they're not pursuing them anywhere else. But this isn't really a problem for majors because what you're starting to see, we saw it at the PGA, we're going to see it at the US Open, is the majors trying where they can to carve out a pathway for live players. But the reality is right now there are no live players who ought to be there who aren't there. Right. Unless you're thinking Taylor Gooch deserves to be there. Well, listen, back to your point, there are four weeks a year where this is not an issue. And four weeks a year where I think people 
think back to the days of why they were really excited about watching the best players in the world play every week. Yeah, and I, I suppose this comes down to this always the divide in this game between the transient sports fan who's really paying attention to the major championships and the core fan who's paying attention on a week-to-week -week basis. And they're certainly not seeing as many of the, the top players as they want right now, but there are a lot of people who are paid a lot more than us to figure that one out.